If there's something strange in the neighborhood, who are you going to call? Ruby the Cat! Welcome to Ruby Reviews Books. Reviews from a cat who cannot read. From a cat who cannot read. Ruby Reviews Books. Where Ruby, a cat who cannot read, Welcome to Ruby Reviews Books, reviews from a cat who cannot read. She may not understand the words, but she sure likes books. Today's book is Ghostland, an American History in Haunted Places by Colin Dickey. This unconventional history of the United States uses ghost stories to explore how Americans conceptualize and internalize our history. Framing each spooky tale as an investigation of place, Dickey starts first with the quintessential haunted house before moving on to businesses, public places, and finally entire cities and towns themselves. Each facet of the American consciousness is introduced with a ghost, some famous and familiar, others highly localized and obscure, which is then contrasted against the verifiable fact of the historical person, which itself is often wildly divergent, contradictory, or frankly mundane. But the focus of each chapter is not the skeptic's revision to haunted history, but on the contrast between death as it happened and the stories we tell ourselves about haunted places. It's in that space that we see how America has sanitized its history, emphasized gothic romance over its sins, forbidden love and baroque curses instead of slavery, rape, war, and theft. How the spectral characters of oft-repeated tales morph to match a new social and political sensibility. But Dickey doesn't use the book to indict hucksters, sensationalists, fiction makers, and tour operators who translate tragedy into ticket prices and book sales. Rather, he shows how ghost stories can be our coping mechanism, how we use them to explain senseless violence as a bulwark against the eroding past, to give tangible substance to our own inevitable death or simply to explain a statue, a grave marker, or a building bereft of context. As Dickey notes of Chicago cemeteries, a ghost is as much a product of poor record keeping as it is of a bona fide tragedy. At its best, Ghostland is a voice for the spirits of America, a way to give them their due both as larger than life tales as well as real persons with aspirations, feelings, agency. At its worst, the book reminds me of a ghost tour I once went on, co-run by two operators. The first was there to tell us lurid tales of restless spirits and forlorn lovers, of cold spots and EVPs, creaking stairs without footfall, and doors that opened and closed on their own. The second, representing the building's ownership, let's call her Teresa, stepped on every claim with an explanation of a child who was only a few months old when her lover supposedly died, or of a murder that never happened, or how sinking foundations and the way moisture pools can have uncanny effects in old houses. It's not that Teresa was wrong, or even cruelly dismissive of people's desire for phantoms and ghouls. It's just that she's not the friend you'd invite on a ghost tour. As a book about who we are as a country, what we've done, what we've become, and how we reconcile the demons of our past with the better angels of our aspirations, Ghostland is a phenomenal commentary on American spirits. As a compendium of ghost stories, however, all it offers you is a truth you maybe didn't ask for, a sense of how our indulgence in urban legend exploits someone else's personal loss. And it puts a little less luster on the burnish of old buildings whose prominence has more to do with whisper mills and enforcing social norms than restless spirits. I give it three and a half stars out of five. Let's see what Ruby thinks. One, two, three, four. Anything else? Nope. Well, there you have it. Ghostland by Colin Dickey, rated three and a half stars and four rubs. Hey 
Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions on what we should read next, please leave a comment.